And so we return with another cosplay secrets video. Ooh, if you didn't check out my first one, here it is here. These are always fun to tell the truth and tell little secrets that sort of happened that are either to do with the cosplay itself or the shoot day or just fun little facts that you probably were none the wiser of. Let's kick things off with my pinup layer costume as you can see here. Now this costume was an interesting one because I didn't actually plan to do it. Yep. This costume was not planned. I was shooting a candy calendar at the time. Don't ask me what year because I have no idea. I'm like on my eighth calendar now. I know, mental. But I was shooting for a calendar and I was like, oh my God, I've not got anything for May the 4th. I always sort of theme May as Star Wars, especially when I was doing cosplay based calendars. The last two years have just been a mix of both modeling and cosplay, but I used to predominantly do cosplay calendars. I'm missing the obvious. I have nothing Star Wars for it. What am I gonna do? So what did I do? Candy did what Candy does best and made this emergency cosplay. That being said, I personally don't think it turned out terribly. And a lot of people really, really liked it as well, which is amazing. The fun fact about this cosplay is not only was it not planned and it was last minute, a lot of people ask me where I bought the belt from. I didn't. I made it terribly out of craft foam. So just EVA, craft foam. It was probably polyprops. Most definitely was polyprops. I don't know why I said probably. It definitely was polyprop. I just made a band and covered it with white lycra fabric that I just had chilling in my fabric box. And then made little two mil detailings on the belt, as you can see. Yeah, they was made from kids craft foam and I just painted them silver. And I probably made it within like a few hours, give or take. Hot glued it, had a little bit of Velcro at the back. It was really, really ugly. Like like the back fastening, but no one was gonna see it right, so who cares? Also, I just draped white fabric around my head. Didn't make a hood, didn't bother really working on that. Just a bit of white lycra fabric wrapped around my head to give that illusion of her classic hood. Yeah, candy cuts corners. Have you noticed? In all truthfulness, for photos, who's gonna know? Why go the extra mile when you literally don't have to? Like if this was going to a con, I would have taken my sweet time with it. I would have made a beautiful back fastening on the belt. I would have made like a hood properly, but it wasn't going to con. It was literally going to a shoot and I think I made it like two days before I had to go and shoot my calendar look. So it is what it is and I used the candy initiative and this is what we've got and I bet you didn't even know. I believe you didn't even know. And that's the fun of it. Next up, we have a cosplay play that I'm not even sure if you know I've done, mainly because it flops everywhere online. I am talking about my Spider Gwen cosplay. Ta-da! Now my fun fact about this cosplay is I got changed in a costa in the middle of central London into this suit. Yes, I did that. And everyone in costa looked at me when I walked out, but I don't care. I got changed in the middle of costa because where else? Well, not in the middle of Costa because that would be awkward. Definitely probably would have made the news somewhere. But seriously, where else am I meant to get changed? Like, where else should you get changed in London if you're not hiring a hotel? You gotta get changed somewhere. So yeah, classy bird, got changed in a toilet, then went and crouched all over London to get these shots and they flopped online. Beautiful, beautiful. It's like poetry to my ears. How glamorous is cosplay now? to you. Changing in toilets, squatting all over London on like pillars and stuff to get epic shots for them to fail online. Welcome to cosplay as a job. Here comes a favourite, an absolute favourite. And what am I going to tell you about this favourite? Well, the story behind this up and coming cosplay is slightly different, but proves that things just don't go to plan. Here we have my Bison Kami, a very popular cosplay at the time. I wore this cosplay to KatsuCon and everyone loved it there. It did really well online. It just got great, great reception. And honestly, it was amazing. I actually bought this cosplay from Calypson Cosplay. I never bought a cosplay off another cosplayer before, but I really loved her Bison Kami. So I got the wig, the armor and the accessories, but it didn't come with like a leotard. And I was like, that's cool. 
I'll make my own. So I did what you would expect. I went and bought a leotard pattern to make my own. It was a cosplay specific pattern that was overly complicated for no reason at all for something that is so simple or allegedly so simple to make. It was so extra for no reason. It was just so stressful to follow. I just couldn't. I could not get my head around this pattern and Katsukon was looming. It was getting closer and closer and I still didn't have a leotard and there was no way that I was going to work out this pattern. I had a few of my friends look at it and they was like WTF and I was like right? It's not just me and yeah I had a mini meltdown. Probably was some tears at the time. Who knows? I don't remember. Knowing me and my stress levels, there was probably definitely tears over it. So I did what any normal person would do and I messaged the Lord and Saviour, Catalyst Latex. I was like, please help me. I need a red leotard. Help me, help me, help me, please. Love you, K. Bye. It didn't exactly go like that, but you get the picture. And Catalyst, being the true champions that they are, created me this delightful leotard. This story is how we ended up with a latex leotard based bison cami because it was meant to be PVC, sure, but it wasn't meant to be latex and that's how we got to it. I think it was meant to happen because everyone knows latex is far more awesome than PVC. PVC is wicked but latex is just chef's kiss. The last cosplay story for you today is this one. Here we see my 2B cosplay. Nothing wrong with this, right? Well, let me tell you, there was something very, very wrong with this. This day, when it was due to be shot, I was severely ill. Severely ill. I mean, ill, ill. And I was staying at Justine's at the time and I was like, it's fine, suck it up, the show must go on, standard performing arts brat behaviour. And Justine was like, are you sure you really don't look well? You know, you don't feel well, we don't have to. We shot a lot the day before and I was like, nope, we're doing it. So we did it. And I have never been so grateful that a cosplay came with a blindfold because I was having hot sweats and then I was freezing cold and it was just a day, a whole day day. It was just so unbelievable how unwell I felt this day but I still managed to crank out all these pictures with Justine and it was because that blindfold saved me because if you could see my eyes in this it would have been game over. My eyes would have revealed everything that was happening in this moment because my eyes tell you things that my mouth doesn't. My face is a dead giveaway with what's going on and what I'm thinking. So yeah, grateful for the blindfold this day. The pictures are amazing still. You would never know I was ill. Yeah, I shot that. Super sick. The more you know her. Huh? That's it for my cosplay show and tell this time round. I hope you enjoyed those wonderful facts. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favourite because there was moments. Whole moment. There's probably another million things I can talk about because so much goes on behind the scenes that you'll never know unless I put it in this video. Take care, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Eh.